The most famous of all U-2 variants was the light night bomber version. It equipped the 588th Night Bomber Regiment, a unit made up of volunteer women pilots who became known as the Night Witches. Their U-2s were fitted with a machine gun over the rear cockpit and could carry 550 pounds of bombs. They flew it as a nuisance raider and were so effective that the Germans, who called it the sewing machine because of its distinctive engine sound, formed special flak circuses of anti-aircraft guns and searchlights to stop them. Often the night witches would cut their engines before gliding in to bomb German camps, using the campfires to spot their targets. In the course of the war, they flew 24,000 missions over German lines and dropped 23,000 tons of bombs. could be maintained in the field under the most primitive conditions. It was a prime example of the Soviet philosophy of producing cheap, simple and reliable aircraft for military use. Early in the war, ground attack aircraft generally concentrated on attacking tank and motorized columns and supporting ground troops. Because of the shortage of available aircraft, they tended to operate in small groups. As the war went on, the ground attack regiments gained more experience in this new kind of warfare. When more Sturmoviks became available, they began to make concentrated attacks in groups of several squadrons. If the weather was bad, individual aircraft often flew as free hunters taking advantage of targets of opportunity. Tactics were constantly evolving. In 1941, the standard Sturmovik formation, a three-plane wedge, had some success, but was vulnerable because of the lack of a rear gunner. In 1942, the line formation was adopted, and late the same year, a standard Sturmovik flight in support of what could be a strangely assorted army on the ground became four aircraft arranged in two pairs. Eventually, it was agreed that the strongest and most flexible unit was a group of six or eight aircraft, usually arranged in line formation. Pilots dropped their bombs at their own discretion or at a signal given by the leader of each group. Whatever their formation, the Sturmoviks needed fighter support to and from their targets, but in the early days of the war, it was not always available. Without fighter cover, they were vulnerable, especially those without the benefit of a rear gunner. Sturmovik regiments operated in all weathers, from the cold depth of the northern winters to the heat of the Crimean summers. When they attacked, they usually made their first run at low level, and if there was no anti-aircraft fire, they would make more runs from different directions. From 1942 on, they began to add diving attacks from altitudes of about 3,000 feet to their repertoire. In mid-1942, the I.L. Sturmovik was reaching maturity. The addition of a rear gunner and the refinement of tactics equipped it just in time to play a major part in the battle for Stalingrad, the industrial jewel of South Russia and gateway to one of Hitler's major objectives, the oil fields of the Caucasus.
On the night of August the 23rd, 1942, German forces launched an all-out assault on Stalingrad. The battle for Stalingrad raged on through September, October, and November. As the winter weather closed in, the Soviets launched a mighty counter-offensive in which Sturmovik, Straffing and bombing airfields and German troops were joined by the new Yakovlev and Lavochkin fighters in a display of aggression that indicated the growing strength of the Soviet air force. The Sturmovik itself came of age demonstrating, as it would throughout the war, its capacity to deal out and take the heaviest punishment. Yeah, On February the 2nd, 1943, the German forces in Stalingrad surrendered. This aircraft, a reconnaissance version of the Polycarpa U-2, is taking film of what remained of the great Russian city on the Volga River. The devastation brought about by more than three months of intense bombardment was extreme. The Soviet military had committed over a million men to the battle for Stalingrad. Almost 15,000 guns and 1,000 tanks had pounded German positions in and around the city. Three quarters of the 1,400 Soviet aircraft involved in the action were of the new generation. 